day has come. It's about 9.35ish on Sunday morning, April 6th, 2014. And I am going to put my cat down. He's gotten, I mean, he wasn't great before, but he's gotten like really bad over the last two or three days. And he's not even eating like as much as he used to. He used to come get excited about his soft cat food every day. Now he won't even finish like two full tablespoons. And he just wheezes the whole time. It's just it's just time. I can't I can't let him go like that anymore. But today Ash Tree's a sad Ash Tree. And he's in a box in the back. Because I don't have a crate. But I'm gonna miss him. He's been my buddy. He was born in my room in the house we're in right now. And his whole life there are like 12 years. So it's a sad day. Oh my goodness, guys. I know that you can't see me because the lighting is terrible. I'm sorry about that. But I didn't really film much today. And after I went and put the cat down, which actually the vet the vets were super nice. All like all the staff there that I was dealing with while I was there. Um, they were just so considerate and polite and treated my cat nicely and he didn't struggle at all which was great but he couldn't breathe so that's probably why and they were just like take as much time as you need because I had to be at work but you know but I, like, I've been up for Except for like 45 minutes to an hour between about 5 and 6. I have been up since 2.30 this morning. And I am exhausted. And I went to work. Because I start, I work from 11 to 5. And after I put the cat down. And they, they totally didn't even ask me if I wanted to stay in the room or anything. They just let me. Like, they are just like, this is what we're going to do. And if you're okay with it. And I was like, yeah, let's, let's do it. Because there's nothing I can do for him. And I can't watch them anymore so that was super nice and it was a lot faster and easier than I expected and he was comfortable and he was eating cheese that I brought him and so overall you know as sucky as it was and this front might sound bad but I was rather pleased with the experience there like they were just they were awesome and then they let me leave him there while I was at work so I left work, or I left the vet, and then I, so I was a little bit early, well, quite a bit early for work. I was like 40 minutes early, so I just sat in my car and cried for a while. And I went in, and everybody was like super nice to me there. Well, I, or anybody that actually saw my face, because it was a little puffy, and you know, when you cry, whatever. And they were like, yeah, that sucks. And then for the first half hour, it was pretty, everything was going fine, and then I started feeling like really, really sick. And, uh, like, bloated and disgusting. And long story short, two hours later, I asked my supervisor if I can just go take a rest. And I was actually considering asking to go home. And I go upstairs, and I throw up. And that was not very exciting. But it made, it made me feel a lot better. <laughs> it made me feel so much better, you have no idea. Um, so I went downstairs and I was like, hey, here's the deal. I just threw up. Like, what do you want to do? And my supervisor, Bev, was like, well, um, if you think you can hang on, like, we could really use your help. But, you know, it's your call. And I was like, okay, well, I'll, I'll do my best. And, oh, so, you know, I'll let you know how it goes along the way kind of a deal. I was a little bit eh, for like half an hour. The rest of the day was fine. I just didn't really eat anything. And then I left work at 5 and I went back to the vet's office which was like literally like two seconds around the corner. 
and they had packed them up in a nice towel inside a little cardboard box and maybe this is morbid so don't judge me but I really just wanted to see them like I didn't want to just like not open the box and just continue wondering like what do it what he looks like so I opened the box and I unwrapped him a little bit and it was just so nice because he just looks so peaceful and like he hasn't been able to sleep without wheezing for or like you know breathing heavily at minimum for a long time and you know especially the last couple of nights and he was just like <gasps> you know and so like seeing him just look so comfortable in that box like the way he used to sleep before he got sick was really really nice for me so and yeah it was I cried again for a long while and then I went home and we're burying him tomorrow so he's currently on the bottom okay don't think this is gross we're gonna clean it clean it out okay but he's in their fridge because you can't just leave him out because they'll rot and stink you know and mom and Tone's flights got delayed so they're home tomorrow and so I thought that we would leave him be until they could say goodbye if they wanted to because mom was super upset that she wasn't there to like be there for me if she's in the Dominican but you know what I'm actually glad that I went by myself because I think like you know when you're really upset about something as much as people want to help they usually don't know what to say and they quite often get it wrong and I'm pretty sure that no matter what anybody would have said like it wouldn't have fixed anything so you know the vet staff were nice were nice and like super professional but I'm glad that I went alone and I could just deal with it not alone and like just not worry about anything else but what I was going through at the moment not that you know they wouldn't have done a good job but hopefully that makes sense I mean I, I love my family and I'm glad that they want to be there for me but there are just things, some things that are better dealt with alone you know and so after I sat with the cat well, his body, I guess. In his little box in the car for a while, I went home and had a little bit of pizza. And, uh, and then I went to Collins, and I tell you, best friends make your world. Nobody hugs, and just, he's, yeah, I don't know. I guess we've been friends long enough that he just, he just knows what to do. And he doesn't have to say anything or anything, but I just, I, I love him, and I appreciate him, and since, especially since mom wasn't there and Veronica the kids were all at home but I just didn't want to be at home and like they weren't you know they couldn't really like just up and leave with me so I just didn't want to kind of hang around at home without the cat there for a while so I went to Collins and we just watched a cooking show cutthroat kitchen and it was pretty interesting but you know just having somebody because I think like once you're done and then, you know, you go through certain little stages or whatever, like, you want to be alone, but then you, like, want somebody there. But I didn't want to, like, sit with my cat in the fridge. Just be like, I don't know. So, yeah, I wanted to leave. But anyway, now I'm going to buy myself a little ice cream because I think that I deserve a little ice cream. And this is a really long, long clip, but I just wanted to, you know, this is also for me when... I'm sad and just remember how happy you felt that you he was just so peaceful in the box. And I think I'll be sad for a little while. Probably a long while. I've had that cat for a long time. And I don't know if all of you know, but he was born in my room. Like literally on the side of my bed in the room I'm currently living in actually. Same house, same room. And I picked him out the day he was born and I was like, yep, that one's mine. He was the biggest kitten and he was so furry and round and he was so, so, so cute. So cute. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, pets just add so much to your life.